Now, the coffin, you get nervous the first 15 minutes. You go, oh my God, this don't feel right. But then after that, it's quite comfortable. All right, welcome to the Chaz Palmentary Show. It's Monday at 11 o'clock. We have a new show today. But before we do that, I want to remind you guys, the one-man show, if you never saw it, I got a big surprise about that one-man show. I can't reveal it now. I can't reveal Ooh. it now. But uh, we're going to have a great show today. We got the ladies. We got Tara Conatrezi, one of the great comics. Here Thank she you. is. They can see you all over. If they all over. If they want to see you, they go to Tara. Look me up. Tara Jokes is where I am. Tara Jokes. Google it, bitch. Google it. It's easier than spelling <laughs> Kenneth Tracy. Even he can't say it still, so. Kenneth Tracy. Kenneth, <laughs> Kenneth Tracy. Kenneth Tracy. I said it. Now you. Kenneth Tracy. Tracy. You go Kenneth Tracy. She goes Kenneth Tracy. You go Kenneth Tracy. I said it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did you have trouble in school? Very much. I was okay. dyslexic. Uh, I believe it. She all had right. Bad uh, uh, Catherine Laducci, we call her the Naducci. Anybody ever call you Nanduch? Yeah, it's Kathy Moriarty gave me that name a long time ago. But you always said Nanduch. I always said Nanduch. Thank you very much. Catherine, you've got a movie coming out with um, Robert De Niro, his new movie, Barry Levison. I can't directing. wait. The strike has got to be over. It's going to be over soon. So it comes out. So it's going to go great. The theater and, and, and it's called what? It's called wise guy or slash alto nights. I don't know which one they're going with. Okay. Yet. All right. And of course, you can go to my Instagram, Chaz Palm and Terry, and find out. Um, you can get on where I'm be appearing. John, where am I appearing in the next few weeks? October 14th, Springfield, Massachusetts, MGM Aria Ballroom. Okay. October 20th, Reading, Mass- uh, Pennsylvania, Santander Performing Arts Center. October 21st, Glenside, Pennsylvania, at the Keswick Theater. Right. Unless we don't have to do November. Well, we, you know, November, I think I'm at the. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, in November, aren't, aren't I at the uh, at the theater in... Uh, Des Plaines. At Huntington? Oh, that's... No, that's all the way in January. Oh, that's in January. Oh, January, if you want to see me at, at uh, in Huntington at the Paramount Theater, that's in January. But get your tickets early. Anyway, Beautiful theater. It's a great theater. We got a big surprise about that. I'm not going to tell you I'm yet. I'm excited. Come and see the one-man show, a hit on Broadway... Voted best show of the year in Las Vegas. If you haven't seen it, put it on your bucket list. All right. So, and don't forget my restaurants, 30 West 46th Street, 264 Main Street, two of the best Italian restaurants anywhere. And I'm there a lot. So if you see me, say thank you. And let's not forget <laughs> Kit. Well, that's what we're here to talk about for a second. Woo! Kit. Kit and, Kit and Bronx Tale did a partnership. Ronnie, the owner, Ronnie. Feig. He, he, Ronnie Feig. Fig, Feig. You say fig, I say fig. I think it's fig. Fig. F I E G. F I E G. Ronnie, who owns Kit, is like brilliant. Uh, I, I've been to his uh, the warehouse in Williamsburg. I mean, just young, talented people. He has a team around him that's phenomenal. Kit has got they got great, great clothes, and we won partnership with them. Look at this one here. Love Bronx Tale. The, the original That's poster. That's the original poster. In America. Right? Yours is Japan. That I was from Japanese Japan. I got the Japanese poster, the Japan poster. She, I got... Yes, one We don't the, know what language that is, That's but. No, I think it's German. No, it's Italian. German, no. It's in then sus. That's like... That's German, you're That's right. That's German. The girls in the car, you got a couple the of Bronx. scenes on this I one. love that it says you the Bronx the like logo. that. And then, yes. this was a great day that I remember so well being yes. on set. Chaz did not want to get in that coffin. Right. And they made a joke of it, I guess. Right, we were laughing. This is Chaz and Bob by the coffin. And as you see, Chaz is... Head up. Head up and smiling. (laughs) (laughs) But this was a funny day. Yeah. You have a funny story about it. This has a little story behind it. Well, what happened was I kept falling asleep in the coffin. (laughs) I was in the damn coffin. You know Bob. Bob wants to shoot every different way. So I was in the coffin, I think a good 16 hours. It was crazy. Yeah, that was a whole day. That was a long, long Ooh, day. Oh, I got It was crazy. Now, the coffin, you get nervous the first 15 minutes. You go, oh, my God, this don't feel right. But then after that, it's quite comfortable. So I said, well, this is pretty nice. Let me just, <laughs> you know, so I started to like, I said, well, let me like nod out a little bit between takes. And I started falling asleep and Joe Pesci started laughing. He goes, hey, Bob, would you tell this kid to get the fuck up? He's sleeping. He goes, <laughs> yeah. he's snoring in my scene, remember? Uh, he went, so then, so what Bob did was they closed the coffin and they shut all the lights on the set. 
And I woke up because I opened my eyes after I woke up and I felt <gasps> horrified. It was like oh a horror. Oh my god! And and it's heavy. That thing is heavy, and I couldn't get the door. And everybody was laughing, and that's when they opened well, it up. We were laughing. Wait, look. Did and you? Then we forgot. No, the hats. Here you go. It says Kith, uh, in, in partnership with a Bronx Tale. Look at this. Look at this on the side. I, I love the, the red. Quality of yeah. this thing. Yes. Kith, you're doing and, the right thing. And, and, and the sure. Piesta Redento. Uh, how do you say that? Piesta Redento. I, I forgot how to say it. Who? In other words, it's like the top of the top. Uh. This was given to me. Look at this one. Look at Chaz this. Chaz getting gangster with the with the black tank top right. and the sweater right now. Yeah. The chest this is a there. kit design, and on the back, let's see if let's I can do it. this. Yeah, go ahead. On let's model back, it for us. On the back, we got just us. Just us. This is a great design. Yeah, that's really nice. I mean, they really, really. I mean, kit is like not for nothing. The quality. Of the this quality. Thing is uh, Right. Insane. Great yeah. shoes. I got one question. Running for shoes. Where am I in all this? She left out the mother. <laughs> have, where's have where's Rosine out there? Ronnie, window? Ronnie, she's pissed off. Wait, she do I have pissed you? off, Ronnie. Do what? I have her anywhere else? No, no, she's not in it. No. Maybe Ronnie needs to put me on the uh, the euphoria one with the blue suit. That's oh, that's oh, right. Ronnie, cool. she's Ronnie a, there's a good idea. Euphoria, me. Euphoria with her? The motherfucking G with the blue suit. <laughs> Oh, that's what it would say on the back. Oh, Euphoria, my God. big, Devil Ronnie, with the big. Blue suit, blue suit on. Yeah, that's right. We, Devil with the blue suit. Okay, we so uh, go to Kid. Go, you go online. I think a lot of them are sold out already, but, you know, try to, you know, see what you can do. I think there's some left, so you better hurry up and get them. I'm not surprised I looked this one out. up and was sold oh, out. I think they're pretty much, not I, all sold out. I think they're sold out, but This I'm not one sure. was, I think. That was sold out, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I got it, bitches. <laughs> Listen, I mean... Right. Unbelievable, and I'm not surprised. Right. Okay, so what do we got here? Uh, I'm going to answer some questions. All right, here. I got something. You know, this guy was so nice. I can't believe what this guy did. Kevin Jones. Kevin, you out there with your wife, Wendy. I think her name was Wendy, if I'm not. Yeah. You, uh, they're really nice people. They, they, came, they drove far to see the show. They saw the show in uh, Akron, Ohio. And I saw them later, I saw them later at a restaurant, Luigi's in Akron, Ohio, good, good Italian restaurant. And they said hi to me, and then they left, and they bought me dinner. They bought me dinner, and, and Sandy Blue Eyes, and oh. Carlos. So I just want to say, Kevin Jones, Wendy, thank you for dinner. That was very wow. sweet of you. You didn't have to do that, but thank you, and I'm glad you loved the show. That's great. That's so, a beautiful, heartfelt email. Isn't it? Yeah, very I don't really want to, It's nice. a very yeah. personal one. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, I don't but want it's to, really nice. Really nice, a heartfelt email. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for <laughs> dinner, and thank you for coming to see the show. Yeah. So uh, you have any questions? You had one of the questions on your thing, I right? I did. Somebody asked me. They wanted our advice. Oh, uh, well, let me do this one do here. Do this one. This is, uh, well, this is from, should I say his name? No. James? Oh, I'll just That's say it, James. Just All right, name. James is. I'm looking for relationship advice. And I'm in a relationship with a woman who is 30 years old. I am only 18. What? Strange, isn't it? Any second thoughts I have are overshadowed by a scene in a Bronx tale when Sonny tells C about his thoughts on Jane. You need a woman to put wind in your sails. Only what's good for you and how you feel about each other. So I want your advice to help me out on this one. Thank you, and I wish you the best. James, I, look, how could I say anything? I wrote those words. And you're 18, she's 30? 12 years. But yeah, that, but at 18. At 18, that's All a, right, but is 18 legal? Yes. Of course it's legal. It's yeah. just legal. I thought it was 21 It's legal. just legal. That's for drinking. Well, he could, be an, oh. he could be a very older 18, and she could be a very young 30, if you know what I'm... You don't like that. Okay. I mean, I get it. Well, Men look, and women do it. it. Mean, I just don't think it has lasting power. I think it's fine in the moment for right, a second. Right, that's what I'm thing. saying. You know what? Here's here's the thing. You make you make a good point. That's a good but point. But we're here. We don't know what their what their chemistry is. Yes. And everybody's different. There yeah. are people who last a very long time. Older woman, younger guy, older guy, younger woman. That people go, it's never gonna last, and they 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 yeah. they laugh it off at the end. Right. So I say, James, go for it. Me too. If you guys really care about each other, you know, life will give you your answer. That's right. Two or three years, she might say, look, you know, I want, I want to get married. I want to find someone more my own age. And you might say, hey, you know what? 
this was great, but it, I want to be with younger girls for whatever reason. So you don't know. But at the moment, I agree, Catherine. Go for it. Go would for you it. advise that if it was an 18-year-old girl with a 30-year-old man? Was my Is it my daughter? Well, if it's your daughter, then no. No, we know the answer to that. Okay. No, but if it's not my daughter, he's 30 and she's 18. Uh, you know what? It depends on how mature yeah. the 18-year-old I, I don't know. is. I, mean, I don't know. See, it could be a double Listen, standard. That's why a... I asked. Because only because it's off, you know, now everything is like equal, 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 equal. But I still think there are certain double standards All right, that but, exist. But how about this? He could be an immature 30-year-old who has a really young heart. And she could be a young, an older 18-year-old maturity. And they meet each other right there. And it could be good. Could be. Look at the romance. You're talking about really Listen, like Bo Derek, 15. Bo Derek married, uh, well, she wasn't 18, but she was pretty young. Bo Derek married John Derek, and he was like, oh, he was. Oh, my God. He was like 30 years old in an hour. He right? was like 30 years old. I mean, he yeah. was, but he, he, you know, this guy was so damn handsome. He won with the most beautiful women he in the world. He was gorgeous, John Derek. Oh, oh John God. Derek. Oh, oh my God. God. You know. But, yeah. 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 So, uh, but 18 is 18. So I do agree with Tara on that one. I don't know, but I think you know what he's he's thirty, she's eighteen. You never know; it could be the love of his life, and she could be la dolce vita, and that could be okay. Well, Howard Stern and his wife are eighteen years apart. What age did they meet, though? See, here's the thing: I don't think eighteen. They're 18 years apart. But that doesn't bother me. I don't me. think that bothers he me. He was like 50 or something. So it's different. I, you're, yeah. you're talking one person's 18. That's the difference. I think sometimes a big age difference, like I'm attracted to older men, but it doesn't make a difference with the attract with the uh, age thing is, with, with, the, with the amount of years. I mean, of course, to a certain extent, but I think it matters at what age you meet the person that their age difference Yeah, there's is. a certain maturity at yeah. a different age. You know what freaks me out about big age differences is I always have this thought. It's like, okay, they have a 20-year age difference. The way I think about it is this guy was 20 when she was born. It's just a really weird way to yeah. think about it, but that's just yeah. how my mind works. Yeah, I am 18 years older than my wife. Jeez, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. You, you guys work together very well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that. You can't, you can't think like that if you're in the relationship. I know what you're saying. He, she, she wasn't even. He wasn't even born yet. Bob. Yeah, no, no I, I think don't about have a that. I'm 18 years old, and I'm hanging out with my friends, and here's this woman coming down the block with a newborn baby, and I look at that baby. Oh, what a cute baby! I go, Oh, that's your baby. Oh my, how old is she? Oh, she, she, she's only nine months old. Oh wow! You know, I'm going to marry this. I'm going to marry your daughter. <laughs> I mean, that's a little weird. See, that's yeah. what freaks me out. I have yeah. no problem with the age difference, but that's just how my mind works. Yeah, yeah. That's the way yeah, I think of it. It's a whole different story if you're thinking that way when a baby's a newborn, then you're a pedophile. Yeah. Again, I mean, big age differences doesn't bother me. Oh, what did she say here, Captain? Uh, Tara, you're here. Could you read that? My experience was me and my ex-husband were best friends, and we were working so much. Four years went by. And his mother, because we live with her, and she is old school Christian, said she wanted us to stop having sex in her house, <laughs> fornicating in her house. And she accused me of not being serious with her son and practically forced him to propose. Oh, before they were married. Oh. Mm. And so I was 19 and 20. By the time he was 23, we divorced. Wow. But it was a simple barbecue wedding. A barbecue wedding? Yeah. I never heard that barbecue one before. Wedding. Catherine's into those. 500 but with the divorce was expensive and he didn't it. want to help pay for it, but I wanted my freedom. All right, so she's, it's not a, she's just saying you shouldn't get married, I guess, unless... So what's the question? And so to know. Really oh, she, oh, she was just responding to everything. She prefers a natural mind diamond as opposed to the oh, way of oh, ones. Okay. It was just all that other stuff that we talked about. Yeah, most women want a natural, real diamond. I mean, it's hard to say, well, this is a diamond. Oh, is it one of those fake ones? Yes. No, uh, it's not fake. I want to. Cupid's a common. I got corrected last quality. time. It's lab created diamond. Yeah. Well, you know what? Whoever you are, you sound like you're a fan of the show when you're watching it. And it's, I like that you paid attention. Thank you. Yes. Where is a good girl? What, where is a good place to take a girl out on a first date? Chas Palmetteries. <laughs> More promoting. More promoting. Go to what my restaurant. Plug. You want a romantic place in Manhattan? 30 West 46th Street. Very romantic place. Italian yes. restaurant. Oh, uh, you want a nice place in White Plains? 264 Main Street. I'm shameless. I'm shameless. And then on the way 
way down, pick up a Bronx Tale kit <laughs> t-shirt, stop a kit. That's right. Both of you could wear his and hers. A good place. So I think it also uh, carries the question with it, like, what is your ideal first date? Catherine, since we're usually plugging yeah. to get you one here. Do you like the first day, Catherine, to be something really special? Or it could be just be a little diner. You know, I honestly want to say I like a happy hour first date. Happy hour? Happy hour sitting at the bar at a happy hour. Because it's not too early. You're not going for coffee. It's not a proper dinner where I'm stuck there with you if I don't like the way things are going. Right, because if it's going happy good. Happy hour, I right. could kind of like... I got the door right there. I could, I could leave. It and gives also, me freedom. And also, if it's really going great, you could say, you want, you want to buy tea? You yeah, know, and then from dinner. the happy hour, we move we from the bar to a table. You know what? That's from a, the living, living room to the bedroom. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, but that's a, that's a great that's idea. That's a great first date. A happy hour... First date. I think that's. I think you're onto something. Here. Guys, DM me at Tara Jokes if you'd like to take Catherine out to happy hour. I will be vetting though. It doesn't mean you get to take her out. Right. It means I have to <laughs> look at your pictures, ask you some questions. She has to ask you questions. You know what? You have process. to answer three questions. What are the three questions that tell a lot about a person? That's good. Yeah. What kind of music do you like? All right. She's I pick, like that. She's picking what, the questions. What music do you really love? What, am, what do you do for a living? What do you what do, do you for a living? living? Come on, living? Right? we're at the age what we need to know. What do you do for a living? Yeah. Right. And uh, what's your favorite movie? What, what, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? <laughs> My questions are horrible. Your pastime. Yeah, I know. She wants a guy who listens to music and watch movies. So what if you're you unemployed and you No, really you want a guy. Like, you know, you, you hate to say that. What do you do? For, no, I mean, yes, we're you, at that I age. think it's you're at that age. What do you do for a living? Yeah. Are, are you a bum? I mean, <laughs> you're not working. <laughs> I'm a professional a, bum. A professional. I mean, no, you want to. You want to. I don't want any bums. You want a responsible person. Yes, a responsible. Look, she doesn't need money. You make your own money. Yeah. Okay, but you like a guy who's, you could, you know, is well off in a way, right? Yeah, established. I mean, established. It would be nice if you if you made a decent living. I think so. Don't you think so? Yeah, yes. I do. I don't think there's any... I mean, you know, women always say that. Uh, and even guys put down women for that. I, I don't put women down for wanting to know that the guy is established and has a good living. I'm sorry. People go, there's nothing wrong well, with that, that shouldn't matter. I go, that's bullshit. A woman who's 35, 40, if she's going to marry someone... That's part of your deal. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Well, I mean, listen, mm -hmm. when you're right? young, it doesn't Absolutely. matter. Love when you're in your 20s yes. and maybe even in your 30s. But I'm 50-something, by the way, and I know I, I don't want, I'm never going to have more kids. So you, you better have your own kids. Right, you, but you don't want to support anybody. But I don't want any small kids unless they're living with your wife. Ex-wife. Ex-wife. Ex and uh, you could be friends with your ex-wife, too. I yeah, that that's either. fine. That's nice. Of course. She Shows kids. you're a decent yeah. person. Right. I mean, you want to, even if, but if you have a person who's married, I mean, who was married, you want to see how they treated their kids. Mm -hmm. If they treat their kids bad, holy shit, what yeah. the hell you got coming? Yeah, that's true. You know, so I, what, are the, what are the good, what do you think a good question? If you only could ask. Maybe if the dating app only, you were only allowed to put three questions to the person you were interested in. What would be the three questions you would ask? I would ask him really philosophical questions. I would say, on your, if you knew this was your last day on earth, how would you spend it? Ooh, that's I would a good want one. to know that. Okay. What, are, what about what's your dream in life? I, yeah, I would say that's that. And I would say... Uh, I would ask that. That'd be one question I would ask. You can ask. sit down with three people at a dinner table, dead or alive. Who would they be? I, that's a good question. If you could sit down with three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Yeah, I mean, other. Here's his, but here's what you got to say. Other than Jesus Christ, everybody picks Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Everyone picks Jesus Christ. Okay, so first. Those so, are your three questions on a Jesus dating Christ. app? No, he was saying philosophical. Those no, were but two. I'm saying yeah. on a dating app. If there was a dating app and you. You see the person, you, the dating app went like this. You see the person you like. You see the oh, picture. I like her. You're okay. a guy, so I like her. Now, you t to talk to her, it requires to answer you me. answer, you ask your three questions. And I would ask, one, you, like I said, this was the last day on earth. How would you spend it? Two. If you had three people to speak to, that because that this says a lot about yeah, them. Yeah, okay. If you had three people to speak to, 
uh, anytime living or dead, who would they be? Okay, and three. And four, I mean three, it would be uh, something philosophical again about um, if you're no, I no that that's that would be that would be part of the other question. How about do you care for animals? I thought you said you need to know what you do for a living. Uh, and what do you do for a living? Mm. Yes. Okay. okay. Reasonable. Because that's important. That's, that's who important. they are. No, I think you're right. That's what who do you they do? are. What do you do for a living life. is a question. What do you do for I think that's a legitimate question. And what would you ask? What do you questions. do for a living? Yeah, one. The one I said. That okay. If you can sit down for dinner with three people, living or dead, who would they be? And the third? Am I funny? <laughs> and if not, then you can't. Who's your no, favorite no, comedian? No, no, no. Who's your oh. favorite comedian? If you didn't answer me, no. The third question um, would be, what's the what's the thing you value most in your life? Okay, I like that. Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are good questions. I mean, if somebody says, "Well, the three people I want to speak to is uh, you know Mussolini, Genghis Khan," you say, "Whoa, Whoa. hold on one second." Right. Yeah. I know. have three questions. That's One it. would be. I think definitely what do you do for a living? I'm not trying to figure out what you make. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out who you are, what mm -hmm. your passion what your passion is. Cause hopefully you're working your passion. Yeah. Two, um, I think I would say, are you creative? What do you do creatively? Are mm. you a creative person? Mm -hmm. What do you do That's creatively? That, yes, but that doesn't make him a bad guy if he's not. No, but I need somebody who's creative. Well, can, Some people you know, don't know they're creative until they so, you know, are exposed to so things. A, so Maybe he was never exposed he's a surgeon. to it. He's a surgeon. That's creation. Okay, but I like a creative person. If they say... I love movies. I'm a cinephile. Or, like that's gonna make my ears perk and you know yeah. raise my eyebrow. This is a good one. And then the third question would be, what what, what makes you happy? No, very. That's good a question. great question. That's a great question. You know, let, let's just do that quickly. If you had three people to speak to, other than Jesus Christ, living or dead, who would they be? My mother, my father. They both died. My mother, my father died when I was eleven, and, so I have a lot of questions for him. And your mother? My mother, I, I, I want to talk to my mother because I didn't get to ask her what I'm thinking about now as an older in my older years. Very good. I have yeah. Good questions for my mother. And, and the third person would probably be. I would like to sit down and talk to Anna Magnani. Anna Magnani. Yeah. Interesting. Mother, father, Anna Magnani. How about you, Tara? Oh, man. I've thought about this before, but for some reason Anybody, now I'm Anybody living or dead in history? Uh, uh, Lucille Ball. You said I couldn't say Jesus. He was you can't say Jesus because he's always one of them. Right? What are yours? No, you, uh, you, well, no. Lucille, Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball. Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <laughs> He's my friend. Nobody train. puts baby in the corner? Patrick Swayze? You got the whole world to choose from? You say Patrick Swayze? Hey, don't him. knock Patrick don't Swayze. Knock. Nobody puts baby in the know. corner? No, what I'm the fuck? Are you kidding me? People. I like um, Patrick Swayze. Well, Patrick think Swayze. of the people He's in my... history. There's nothing Lucille wrong. Ball, I did. I had this thought planned out. It was definitely Jesus Christ. Well, no, forget Jesus Christ. He said you can't do Jesus Christ. Oh my okay, God. so Lucille How about Jesus Ball? Christ's right, best I'll go, friend? I'll go. So you got time to think. No, go. I'll go. Well, obviously, it would be Jesus Christ. So I would want to... <laughs> No, 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 I just said, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying oh, wait, and could, but Besides Jesus Christ, I would like to, if I got a fourth one, I would love to sit down with Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, okay. that's great. Okay, but we got three. You only got three. Okay. I would say me, I, I would definitely pick George Washington. I want George Washington. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I want to speak to George Washington who started this country. I want to ask him about you know, so many things, how he, he didn't want to be king. He wanted the democracy. I mean, that's, I want to, you know, he was supposed to be king. And he said, I will not be king. This is a democracy. And went back to his land that he could have lost. And I mean, that's. What about Abe Lincoln? Abe Lincoln. He's is, another is, interesting Abe Lincoln cat. is right up there. I, I would say, I would say Abe Lincoln, I would want to speak to uh, Marcus Aurelius. Oh, Who's that? He's going all the way. I'm, I'm going all the way. Marcus Aurelius was, you know, a philosopher, and and I would want to speak to uh, uh, Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Don't know him either. Rudolf Steiner is that's a guy I, I want to talk to. Uh, Rudolf Steiner, Marcus Aurelius, and uh, and uh, who did I say the first one? The first one I said. Jesus uh, Christ. No. no. Uh, Marcus Aurelius, Rudolf Steiner. You, I think you mentioned four. And uh, no, I mentioned three. Marcus Aurelius, Rudolf Steiner, and uh, George Washington. Yeah, George. And George Washington. Washington. Yep. 
Now, how about you? Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball. Mary. The Virgin Mary. Wow, okay. Because I can't get Jesus. <laughs> but I thought that we can't mention those No, people. Mary, no. Only Jesus Mary. Christ. You oh. Could say, you could say John the Baptist. You could say him. Oh, I would say Mary. And I, you know what? We don't hear enough from Joseph in the Bible. Maybe could, maybe yeah. he'd have a few things to say. No, but he could tell you about... Is this sacrilegious? Should I be saying But he this? could tell you about Jesus Christ. You know, so that, that'd be a good idea, too. So And living Carol Burnett. I still want to meet Carol Burnett. Lucille Boyd, you could sit with her. That'd be, that'd be yeah. incredible. Uh, you know what? We like to hear from you guys. What are your three people that you would talk to? Except Jesus Christ, because we know that's a no-brainer. Yeah. So go to Chaz Palmetary Show at gmail.com or Tara Jokes, right? Or Catherine Narducci on Instagram. Give us your, uh, who do you think? Who do you think? And, uh, uh, you know, that's a good question, man. All right. So, what, what do we have next here? We got a, we got any more? Uh, I mean, what would you do for? Wait, let me ask you a question quickly. If you met a guy, you would drop dead in love with. You fell in love. Uh huh. He's rich, multimillionaire. Treat you like a princess. Everything is incredible. Okay. But, but he says to you, "I don't want you to work. I just want you to travel the world with me." You have to give up your career. Would you do it? Everything was just going so good. and I know. It depends on what age you are, I guess I was. You're the age you are right now. No. I would rather tell jokes to 89 people at the Funny Bone in Syracuse <laughs> than be all over the world with you. Yeah. I don't know. I... You won't be happy. I, I loved, I, I mean, at some point, here's what I feel. It sounds amazing. And I was just in the south of France, and I remember going, I want more of this. I need more of this. I want to travel more like this. But like anything else, it would get redundant. Everything gets re Too much of anything. Can't live on love. Right. Too much of anything no. isn't good. And I don't, as much as I want to retire to Europe or be in Europe more when I'm semi-retired, I don't think I could, I, I can never stop comedy. I have stage. a question for the both of you. Let's hear it. Could I ask? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Now, you named three people you'd want to sit down with, but I'm going to ask you, say, what, one of the people that you named, what is one of the questions you would ask? Just one question. What would you ask the Virgin Mary? Did you, did you really not do it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Were you scared? Was it the time? Would you have gotten stoned to death? What was? The How did you get pregnant without having sex? How did you get sex? pregnant? Um, or, I mean, obviously, we. All, I mean, if you're a believer, immaculate it's conception. immaculate conception. What what did you do with the moment when you found out then? Like that moment, like how did you know, like, you know, how did you know Joseph was a good enough man? I don't know. A ton of questions. No, but you get one well, question uh, right now. Yeah, what I about you? About well, me? Who would you ask? Lucy in your Ball, three? I would ask the same thing I asked you. When did you know? Okay. Because she didn't really. She was just a model. Okay. You got one person, one question. Now you're going on a, off the charts. One person, one question on your list. Who and what's the question? I would ask Marcus Aurelius, if there's one thing that, is there one thing that you could tell me that guarantees a man will, would, would be happy? What would that be? I would ask him that. I would if we know. say that again? If there's one thing you could tell me that is the best chance for me to have a happy life, what would you say to me? What, what would you say, my, your advice? And he probably would say, discipline is destiny. That's what he probably would say. You know. Wow. And discipline we'll, is destiny? I love that. Discipline is destiny. Yes. Why don't I get that? Discipline is destiny? Oh, it's where you're going to go if you're disciplined. Yeah. If you're disciplined, you'll, you'll, you're disciplined, you're... you're your life will be successful. You're focused successful. on your goals. Right. You're focused on which your is, goals. Which is easier said than done. Yeah, Marcus Aurelius, I think he's the one who said, you choose your joys and your sorrows way before they happen. So, you know. Wow. You choose that way before they really happen. You know, uh, he, yeah, he would be someone I would ask. I mean, how did this guy come up with this back then? We're talking about one of the early, early philosophers in, in mankind. What the hell made this guy think of that shit back then? I mean, I'm like, you know, Plato, and when you see all these guys, you go, well, that's why we're quoting them how many years later? <laughs> Thousands of mm -hmm. years well, later. Well, Plato, 400, what is that, 400 B.C.? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, 
That's why we're quoting Socrates. them. Socrates. You know, I always, I always wish that maybe, you know, I, you know, humbly I say, I hope somebody can remember my quote 400 years from now. Well, well you're doing them on the podcast. They're going to well, live forever. Yeah, I, if anything, the saddest thing in life is waste of talent. I hope they remember that one. And that's not even and my that's quote. That's your that's dad. My, that's my father's quote. Yeah, that's a beautiful quote. Yeah, that's beautiful. my father, Lorenzo. And so, that's got to um, be one of the, the one of the most popular of our of our time. Quote, and is it better to be feared or loved? Is it better to be loved or feared? Yeah. Loved or feared. But yeah. wasn't that Machiavelli? Oh, uh, that was Machiavelli. But 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 you you brought it. Back. Yeah, there's another person I like to talk. Yeah, to. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that was one I thought you were going to wow. say. Wow. Well, I know so much about him. I read so much about him. I actually had. I had lunch at his house, the actual house he wrote The Prince in Tuscany. I had lunch there. The man who bought his home and his estate. Where at, was it? In Tuscany. Oh, wow. It was pretty amazing. Is that where you got Dante's name, obviously? No, Dante I got from Dante's uh, Inferno. Inferno. Oh. You know, I used to read that. You know, I was crazy, a young kid reading Dante's Inferno. I don't know. You know, I, that's what I mean. I always wanted to be a writer mm -hmm. and, and an actor. And, I should be shot. I've never been to Italy. You're <gasps> lucky you got to go. Oh, Catherine, you got Come to go. Come on. I'm that's going next year. This, you know, she could have went twice this year. Do you know where your year. family's from, Catherine? Caserta. Caserta. Me and Leo, Me and Leonardo DiCaprio, both our families are for Caserta. I don't know if Leo now, where is to say that. Where, where is that? Naples. In Na oh, yeah, Outside of Naples. Outside of Naples. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I would love to go there. But I'm going to go in 2024. I'm going to go next year to the Ischia. Film festival, oh. and I might go to the Positano Film Festival. That's great. Yeah. Fantastic. I'd like to do that. Well, you know what? I really, this has been a really great show. This was, about yeah, this, this, this took a different and turn. And, and I want to remind you guys, Kit. Am I saying it right? Kit. Kith. Kit. Kit. Kit, look at this. Look at this stuff. Gangsta. Gangsta. No, this is great stuff. Look at these shirts. Uh, uh, Kit went partners with Bronx Tail. We have these incredible things out. Unbelievable. The hats. Hats. Catherine, she wants she wants a Bronx Tail shirt, Ronnie. Keep the money. Keep the She wants a Bronx. Let's think about it. And what about Euphoria? That's not a bad, that's a great idea. A lot of young people. He would like I think that. Euphoria. Anyway, Ronnie, thank you for the great collection of kit. Yeah. yeah. And uh God bless you, everybody. Yeah. Catherine, they want to reach you, Tara Jones. I'm, well, I'm not Catherine. I'm no, Tara. Ca Tara? <laughs> yes. I, I want to thank the people that listen to the podcast and then come to my shows. Yes. I know. I, I, I don't guess I realize how much how many people we reach with this. It means the world to me. I love meeting you guys. I love taking pictures and talking to you. So thank you so much. All my shows are listed at tarajokes.com or on my Instagram, Tara Jokes. All right. Catherine. Well, you know when the movie's coming out, Catherine? Um, it, they said February second. Great. Um, but now no, with the strike, everything with the strike. got pushed oh, back. Oh shit! Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, you know me, chasbomterry net. You see my show, uh, my restaurants. Come and see them, and also my collection, my Bronx Tale collection. Go to chasbomterry net. You can pick up a shirt. But this is about Keith today, and. Uh, Pick him up. Call Keith.com. Great stuff. Kith. Kith. Sorry, Kith. I'm sorry. I have dyslexia. Apologize. We will see <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get he worried. Has a it's a dyslexia. It's not dyslexia. dyslexia. It's, it's the, the, dyslexia. dyslexia. When, you have, when you have dyslexia, you don't say it right. Dyslexia, dyslexia. you don't dyslexia. say it right. I got dyslexia. Sorry. <laughs> uh, for those of you who have dyslexia, it's an advantage. Because you can't do certain things like that, but you know what? God gives you a gift where you could do other things, whatever that is. And whoever wants my doodle, you could have it. You could have it. DM me. DM, DM I'll Catherine. Send you my doodle. DM Tara jokes to Dame Catherine. Right. That doesn't sound I want, right. I'll my, send you my doodle. It sounds like doodle. <laughs> There are, my doo -doo. there are probably guys that want that gross um but if you want to date Catherine and nothing to do with doo doo uh, i want those dms at tara jokes i will be vetting you tara's going to be doing the screening you can't get to me if you don't go through her she's, she's the guy behind the guy god bless you and see you next week <laughs>